Kelly's sister. Oh. Hey, there you go. There it is. All right. All righty. Well, let do me share our hit, screen. Do we have to hit got it or whatever for that to go in that box to go off? I don't think so. Yeah. It says. Yeah. So, yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Okay. What did it ask you? The little box says this is being recorded and you have to hit oh. got it or leave meeting for the oh, oh, I see. So, so, yeah. I see. I see. All right. All righty. Well, the book of Daniel, we're in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter one. And we were doing the introduction. So we'll finish up that introduction. But how about if we just go ahead and read also Daniel chapter one. Hang on one second. Your your page just overrid all of mine. I got to figure out how to put mine back on here again. Oh, okay. Now, let's all know how she's up here. Young people, they're wonderful. <laughs> when you put that up with these definitions, it takes the whole screen and pushed all my other ones off. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, that didn't work. No, no, where is it at? Patience. Thought it was down here last time. Yeah, but that's not. Should have been able to do that. Oh, oh there it is. Okay. okay. We're back on. You're back. <laughs> I fixed it. We're back. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel chapter number one, verses one through four. <laughs> Daniel chapter one, verses one through four. Mm -hmm. Everyone have it? Yep. Mm -hmm. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, under Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Amen. So to do a little recap uh, on our introduction, and we didn't finish it up, but we'll do a quick recap. It was written, obviously, by Daniel. We saw that, and, and he refers to himself in chapter 7, verse 28, chapter 8, verses 2, and chapter 9, verses 2. And then also, the book consists of two distinct parts. Uh, the first six chapters are principally historical, and then the remaining six chapters are prophetic. Then it was also written in two languages, the Hebrew, and we talked about the division and where it was it cut off. The, the scholars did the work and, and found uh, where it was Hebrew and where it was Chaldean, or also some people call it Aramaic, uh, but it's written in Hebrew and Chaldean. And we're going to see partly why when we, or not why, but how that was possible when we get into our lesson. Then also, Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem three times. He did it under um, Jehoiakim, which is what we're dealing with here. And then Daniel came to Babylon in this raid. The second one was under Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim's son. And uh, Ezekiel went in to Babylon during this raid. And then the third and final raid happened under Zedekiah. Yes. And that's when uh, the whole temple and the city was demolished and torn down. Mm -hmm. And then we also talk about how Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel are contemporary prophets. Jeremiah prophesied in Jerusalem before and during the exile. Ezekiel prophesied in Babylon among the exiles. And Daniel prophesied in Nebuchadnezzar's administration. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah prophesied the 70 year captivity at the beginning of the first invasion, which was under uh, Jehoiakim, that could be found in Jeremiah chapter 25, uh, one through 14. Then also 
Daniel served in the administrations of Babylon, the Medes, and the Persian kingdoms. So he served a long time. He came in as a young man, and he and and uh, we don't have a re record of his death, but he was probably in his nineties, wow, or more when when he finally died. And then also Daniel is mentioned in the Old Testament by Ezekiel. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Sister Kim, you get Ezekiel chapter number 14 and read verse 14 and then verse 20. Ezekiel 14, verse 14 and verse 20. And Brother Larry, if you can get Ezekiel chapter 28. Verse number three, huh? Ezekiel 28, verse number three. Ezekiel is right before Daniel. Ezekiel 28, three? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll have Sister Kim go first. Somebody's phone ringing. Sorry. Even if <laughs> these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. And then verse 20. 20. Even though <clears throat> Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, said the Lord God, they will deliver neither son nor daughter. They will deliver only themselves by their righteousness. So we see that God, Amen. Ezekiel, remember Ezekiel was in Babylon when he's making this prophecy. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. he went in the second raid. So he's warning, trying to warn people to repent before the third raid comes. Right. Yes. And so he's saying that God is going to destroy and judge Judah. And the point he's making there is he says, even if Daniel, Job, and Noah were in this city, I would not rescue or I would not stop the judgment. Only mm -hmm. they would be spared. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see the significance. We know the significance of, jo of Noah mm -hmm. during the flood. Only yeah. Noah and his sons made it. So he interceded for his sons. He said, well, in this, in this case, only Noah would be spared. And this is what God is saying. And then Job also, Job, remember Job prayed for his children yeah. and Job prayed for his, uh, his four so-called friends. <laughs> right. He interceded for them. And then we also see Daniel. Uh, the, the, uh, Noah and Job were all obviously men of esteem as well, but Daniel was right in that same category with with those three. And his yeah. he's already renowned because you know uh, when Ezekiel wrote, he put dates on his prophecies. Yes. So by this time, this is 10, 15 years into the captivity, and Daniel certainly is well known. Mm -hmm, because yes. Daniel made a name for himself right away. There are many uh, 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 theologians who question whether or not this was talking about Daniel. Maybe this is talking about another Daniel. It's oh, like we, no. don't, we don't have to go there because <laughs> they've been babbling enough times or and long enough for yes. Daniel to be of renown at this time. Yes. I mean, my goodness, Nebuchadnezzar had his dream the, the second year he was king. Yes. <laughs> and when Daniel gave the interpretation, he made Daniel great. He made him the ruler over all of Babylon. He yes. made him the ruler over all wise men. And so mm -hmm. this probably certainly was talking about the, the Daniel who wrote the book of Daniel. Yes. And also he's found in Ezekiel chapter number 28, verse number three. It says, are you wiser than Daniel? Is no secret hidden from you? So here Ezekiel is writing about the king of Tyre. Mm -hmm. And he's comparing him. And so he's coming against him and says, you know, because the king of Tyre was known for his wisdom. He was yes. known for his wealth. He was known for all these things. And so he asked the question, are you wiser than Daniel? Mm -hmm. So Daniel's name not only was renowned throughout Babylon, yes, but it was all, it, it spread throughout all of it. Because remember, uh, uh, Babylon ruled over all the other nations at that time. Right. Yes. He ruled over Tyre. He ruled over Egypt. He ruled over Am and Moab. Uh, uh, all of the Philistines. And so Daniel's name went far and wide. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we see there that his name is mentioned in the Old Testament. And his name is also mentioned by Jesus in the New Testament. Sister Tammy is going to get Matthew chapter 24, verse number yes. 15 for us. 24, 15. Yes. When you 
When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso reads, let him understand. Amen. So here Jesus at this uh, Olivet Discourse, when he is predicting the destruction of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. yes. he tells them specifically, when you see the abomination of desolation mm -hmm. standing where it should not be standing, mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what Daniel said. So obviously Daniel, when he prophesied, he prophesied of the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, unfortunately, many theologians take that passage as Jesus is talking about the abomination of desolation and they throw it even further in the future. It's in the future even to us. <laughs> no, it hasn't happened yet. But no, Jesus specifically says to, mm -hmm. to the four disciples who were asking him to right. that time, when you see mm -hmm. the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. that and the abomination of desolation was, uh, was the Roman army standing in the temple. Mm -hmm. yes. They invaded the temple. Well, it started off with those zealots, mm -hmm. those rebels in the city. They yes. were in the temple. They shouldn't have been there. But then also they drug uh, Titus and his men into the temple and the temple was burned down and destroyed. And as a matter of fact, that's where Titus was crowned emperor. And also he set up uh, an idol uh, of himself or for himself in the temple. So that was the abomination of desolation okay. that yeah. Jesus was talking about. Yes. And quite naturally, he was just he gave him a forewarning. He says, as a matter of fact, when you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, that's when get you out. better take off and get out. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep. so we see that that Daniel is mentioned in the Old Testament and he's mentioned mm -hmm. in the New Testament. So Daniel is quite uh, an individual. So having said that, let's go and launch into uh, uh, the book. Verse mm -hmm. number. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that later. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure I didn't get. Yep. All righty. Verse number one. So it says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, under Jerusalem and besieged it. Mm -hmm. So this event happened, uh, according to one individual by name of Yan, who is the history of Hebrew commonwealth. This happened in 607 BC, which was the 368th year after the, uh, the United Kingdom split in Judah, north and south. So that's 300, uh, 368 years after that. Well, according to another uh, chronicler named Usher, this happened in, the, uh, in 606 BC, which is the 369th year. And most most these uh, theologians go by Usher because he was the most precise in his uh, chronology. Yeah. But anyway, it happened around 606 BC. This is where we are, just to date ourselves, because we talk about how we like to get the the setting and the context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so who is this Jehoiakim fellow? Jehoiakim was made king by Pharaoh Necho. Mm -hmm. Remember, we read Pharaoh Necho. Uh, mm -hmm. Josiah, the last good king, yes. interfered with Pharaoh right, Necho right. as Pharaoh Necho went to uh, Assyria mm -hmm. in the Battle of Carchemish, and he said that the Lord sent him to do it, and Jerem and Josiah went and interfered with it, and unfortunately, he was killed. Right. Yes. And then Pharaoh Necho took Jehoahaz, Josiah's son, and made him king, mm -hmm. and then took him away and put this fella, Eliakim, in his place and changed his name to Jehoiakim. Hmm. And then that's when Nebuchadnezzar came to power. It was the first year of his reign. So now we got a new king on the block. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh Necho went away. Now here comes Nebuchadnezzar. So this is the setting. Um, his name was Eliakim. That name Eliakim means God of raising, God of raising. Uh, so his parents named him well, but he didn't behave too well because <laughs> he was an evil king. The scripture oh, says he man. was evil. He had the prophet Uriah 
put to death. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to read this one. I mean, he, he just wasn't good at all. The Bible says he did that which was evil. Well, here's mm -hmm. some examples of what he did, what was evil. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Kim, get Jeremiah 26. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 26, chapter 26, verses 20 through 24. As a, and, and, and we're familiar with the passage. This is where Jeremiah dictates uh, a, a message of warning against Judah mm. and, and particularly Jehoiakim because he's a king. And he sent it through his scribe, uh, Baruch. And um, he wrote it down. Well, this is what, oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, the, it's the similar. It's, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead and read, read it. Yeah, okay. this is when Jeremiah gets put in jail. I'm sorry. Jeremiah is going to get put in jail. And then they're retelling the story of Jeremiah being put in jail and other prophets coming along to prophesy the same things that Jeremiah did. And uh, look at what Jehoiakim did to them. Jeremiah now, 26. Go ahead. Now, there was also a man who prophesied in the name of the Lord. Can you see that? Uriah the son of Shemaiah, of Kirkjuf, Jerem, who prophesies against this city and against this land according to all the words, words of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And when Jehoiakim, the king, with all his mighty men and all the prince heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah Uz <laughs> heard it, he was afraid and fled and went to Egypt. Then Jehoiakim, the king, sent men to Egypt. El Nathan, the son of Akbor, and other men who went with him to Egypt. And they brought Uriah from Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim, the king, who killed him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahiakim. Ahiakim, the son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so that they should not give him into, into the hand of the people to put him to death. Yeah, so here, so Jeremiah was prophesying against, he went right into the temple and prophesied against the city and against the king. And so they said, we're going to put him to death. And so then these other, other individuals interceded for uh, Jeremiah said, no, we're not going to put him to death. And then that's when they brought up Uriah and what Jehoiakim did to him. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, sh and look at the contempt. Mm -hmm. Uriah fled Jerusalem and went to Egypt trying to get yeah. away from this crazy man. Yeah. And this crazy man sent hit man into Egypt, brought him back and killed him and, and showed contempt and just threw his body out into the graves with the common people. Uh, mm -hmm. he, this is what he did to a prophet of God. Uh, yes. So this was not a nice fellow. Not at all. This Jehoiakim. Mm -hmm. And then also he destroyed the word of God. This is one where Jeremiah wrote and dictated. Mm -hmm. And 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 he and and then uh, let's read that one. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter number 36. Jeremiah chapter number 36. And we'll start at verse number 21. So the king sent Jehu to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. And Jehu read it in the ears of the king mm -hmm. and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. So, so there were other officials who heard this uh, scroll heard this prophecy before it got to the king and they trembled mm -hmm. and they were afraid. Mm -hmm. They feared God. They respected God's word and his message, but right. now it's being read to the king and let's see what he does. Uh, and then it says, now the king sat in the winter house, verse 22, in the ninth month and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehu had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth. 
until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the herd. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. So people uh, begging and pleading with this madman, and he still wouldn't listen. But the king commanded Jeremiah, the son of Hamalek, and Shiraiah, the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdel, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah the prophet, but the Lord hid them. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after that the king had burned the roll, and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take thee again another roll, mm -hmm. and write in it all the former words that were in the first roll, which mm -hmm. Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt say to Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast burned this roll, hmm. saying, Why hast thou written therein? Saying, The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land, and shall cause to cease from thence man and beast. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. So none of his sons uh, from that point on were going to sit on the throne of David. It says, And his dead body hmm. shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the night to the frost. He's not even going to get buried. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, what he did to Uriah came back on him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And mm -hmm. I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but mm -hmm. they hearken not. Mm -hmm. Then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it unto Baruch, the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire, and there were added besides unto them many like. Don't be messing with God. Oh, his word. He thought he was destroying God's word. He said, nope, do, make another one and then add some more to it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. So, so that's the Jehoiakim that we're talking about mm -mm. Evil. in Daniel. Evil like the Bible says. And now we know, uh, get an idea of what he did and what kind of man he was. So going back to Daniel, it says, uh, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, under Jerusalem and besieged it. So Nebuchadnezzar sent a band of raiders in his name to do this work. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and a bunch of other ites <laughs> came. And that's when they attacked Jehoiakim, uh, that word besieged there means to cram. Hmm. So in other words, they surrounded him. Mm -hmm. They shut right. the city up. Mm -hmm. put, a squeeze. put a tight squeeze on. Wow. To cram, to confine, assault, enclose, distress, put up in bags. <laughs> so wow. The, so the idea was so that no one can go in and mm -hmm. no one can come out, mm -hmm. which means no trade can come in. No work can go out. So, so Jerusalem, would, uh, what they usually worked in was olive oil and oils and, 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 and figs and those things. That's what they traded in. Well, when they were shut up, they were not able to sell any of those wares to anyone else. No export, no import. No export, no <laughs> import. Very good. <laughs> Which is going to dry up the city, mm -hmm. put pressure on the people, mm -hmm. bring starvation bring famine, yeah. hunger, all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we see that that's, that's what they did. And um, then it says he besieged them. So Jerusalem was a strongly fortified place and it was not easy to take it except as the result of a siege. Okay. And so remember Jehoiakim reigned for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And so when, when his name was changed uh, from Eliakim to Jehoiakim, then he was in charge. And then in his third year, that's when Nebuchadnezzar came in, but he still was basically a, a vassal or a servant. And right. then he rebelled. And then yeah. uh, altogether, he was there for 11 years. And Nebuchadnezzar came in and uh, took, took some items out. So we see that um, 
this is what happened. Then verse number two of Daniel, back in Daniel, it says, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, into Nebuchadnezzar's hand. Right. Who, who gave him into Nebuchadnezzar's the hand? The Lord. Lord the Lord did it. My Lord. Handed him right over. Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem and his kings, but it was God who gave them the king or, or gave them to the hand of the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. in, yes. in 2 Kings chapter 24, 1 through yeah. 4, it says that the Lord sent yeah. Babylon to, to destroy Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So it was mm -hmm. the Lord's doing and because he, he had prophesied through Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel mm -hmm. and all of them. And so this is him doing. Thank you, Jesus. And then it says, it says, um, verse two, part. with part of the vessels of the house of God. So, so he, he took Jehoiakim and gave him into Nebuchadnezzar's hand. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that he was taken into captivity yet. Because remember this right. happened in the fourth year of his reign. He rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar and he stayed king for another 11 years. But that just meant when he says it was in Nebuchadnezzar's hands, it meant Nebuchadnezzar, he was Nebuchadnezzar's servant. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then at that time also, he took, Nebuchadnezzar took part of the vessels mm -hmm. of the house of God. Mm -hmm. He took part of the vessels. Nebuchadnezzar took part of the vessels in raids one and two. Mm -hmm. But then he destroyed the city in raid three. Mm -hmm. So let's look at that example. Uh, so this would greatly hinder the priests from doing their duties. All right. Of course. If they, if they couldn't have the vessels, the vessels are talking about all of those instruments, the pans, the shovels, yes. the snuffers, the snuff out the, the, the lamps, all yes. of those vessels. Mm -hmm. He took part of those. So that means he left some, but he took others. But this would prevent them from, 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 from performing their daily duties. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible plainly says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Amen. And also the priests represented the people to God. Mm -hmm. And if they couldn't do their job, then the people couldn't be represented to God. No. So this is what we see here. <clears throat> but, 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 you have, but you have to say that was purposeful because by this time they had been so disobedient yeah. and had killed the prophets and had just rejected the grace of God that that was purposeful. I don't want your worship. I don't want your sacrifice. I don't want nothing from you. So, no, he didn't want to hear from them because he, they didn't want to hear from him. Yeah, very good point. <laughs> so, yeah. So he gave them what they want. Right. He turned them over to what they want. You don't they want me? Okay. So, Sister Kim, let's look at uh, uh, part of the vessels taken in raid number one. Mm -hmm. And that's in Second Chronicles 36, chapter 36, 5 through 7. 5 through 7. And then Sister Tammy... She's going to get the second raid for us. That's found in 2 Kings what am I doing? 24, second, 8 through 17. Second 24. Okay. So raid number one, part of the vessels were taken. And then raid number two, all of the vessels mm. were taken. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. All right. 36, 5 through 7. Yes. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against him and bound him in bronze feathers, feathers uh -huh. and carried him off to Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar, Nezer, also carried off some of the articles from the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Isn't that what we see Daniel say? Mm -hmm. yep. That's what he did. He took part of it and he put it in his temple in yep. Babylon. So that was the, the first raid. Now let's look at the second raid. Second Kings 24, 8 through 17. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king. So this is Jehoiakim now. Mm -hmm. And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nahushta. I like that. Nahushta. Nahushta. And he only reigned for <laughs> three months. That was it. Short. The daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. 
and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city as his servants were besieging it. Where else am I going? Oh, down to 17. Then Jehoiakim, king of Judah, his mother, his servants, his prince, princes, his officers went out to the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon, in the eighth year of his reign, took him prisoner. And he carried out from there all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. And he cut in pieces all the articles of gold, which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord. As the Lord had said, also he carried into captivity all Jerusalem, all the captives, captains, and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remain except the poorest people of the land. And he carried Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives, his officers, and the mighty of the land he carried into, into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. All the valiant men, 7,000 craftsmen and smiths, 1,000, all who were strong and fit for, the, for war. These the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. Then the king of Babylon made Mat Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place and changed his name to Zedekiah. So again, Ooh. very detailed. The wow. scriptures, uh, Ooh, it's, wow. I, I love wow, the, wow. the context here mm -mm -mm. because we always talk about the Bible is a big book. Yes. Uh, but it all is also its own commentary. Yes. It explains things. You just have to read it and put it together and mm -hmm. see the context in which Daniel is writing. <clears throat> because mm -hmm. during this second raid, Daniel's already in Babylon. Wow. Mm -hmm. Serving in Nebuchadnezzar's court. Mm -hmm. In this second raid, it was a big one. You see, it just a list of all the people that were taken, wow. but it's still the second raid. Mm -hmm. That one, Ezekiel went in to captivity, but you still got folks in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You would think again that after that big hit that they would learn a lesson. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yes. But people, you know how people are. People don't yeah. learn the lessons. Folks is folks. They don't learn the lesson. Hard headed, hard hearted. Stiff neck. Stiff neck. That's yeah. where Ezekiel, Ezekiel, God told him that he was going to make his forehead hard mm -hmm. like these people. He said, because their foreheads are hard, their necks are stiff. So I'm going to make your head hard and your neck stiff also, right. because you got to deal with some tough people. Mm -hmm. when, when, when God commissioned Ezekiel, he said, you're dealing with a tough crowd. He said, Ezekiel, if I'd have sent you to a foreign nation, they'd have listened to you more than I'm sending my you to, the, to, yes. to my own people. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Lord, help us. And so it, it almost is like, you know, we, we can look back on those days, uh, mm -hmm. but we see the same thing happening in our day. Okay. Oh, boy. Right. Yes, we do. yes, we do. A, a lot of times we always talk about the children of Israel in the wilderness and say, oh, man, I, what was wrong with those people? <laughs> yes. And then in this situation right here, what's wrong with these? Can't they see what's going on? Well, look at where we are. Right. Yeah. Yes, indeed. The same scenario. That's when we started this lesson out. We read Romans chapter 15, 4, because it says, whatsoever things were written aforetime was written for our learning mm -hmm. that we, through the scriptures, might have patience and, and through be comforted through the scriptures, might have patience and hope. So we can learn something mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. these scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. We can learn what to do mm -hmm. and how to stand. Right. And then we can learn not what to do or what not to do, not to. Yes, what true. not to do. And so we see here. And then also, uh, and we're not going to read 2 Kings 25, but just if you want to, 2 Kings 25, 8 through 15, and the rest of the chapter there, that's when the, the he destroyed everything in the third raid. Mm -hmm. Temple was torn down. The king's palace was torn down. The mighty men's right. homes were torn down. The walls were burned down. Every, it was just absolutely destroyed, but they still left some poor people in the land amongst mm. all those ruins. So mm. 
So just look at the, the devastation there. Well, these vessels that were taken, okay. where else do we see these vessels show up in Daniel? In the uh, Belshazzar. Bel 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 Sister, Sister Marcia, you get Daniel chapter number five. They were drinking out of Verse it. one through four. <laughs> Belshazzar. Yes, yes. Belshazzar is not Nebuchadnezzar's son. The, the Hebrew doesn't have a word for grandson. Right. Which, hmm. is, which is interesting because hmm. like we always say god don't have no grandchildren <laughs> he only has children i like that <laughs> but it, the hebrew doesn't have a word for grandson hmm. so it's just a a, a, a um a descendant okay yeah. or a, a predecessors or not predecessors who come what's the after what, what comes after the predecessors before successor um, successor successor, mm -hmm. successor. And that's what, so, so Belshazzar, it, it was probably Nebuchadnezzar's great-grandson. Okay. <clears throat> so that's who we're here. Daniel chapter five, verse um, one through four. Belshazzar, the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, mm -hmm. might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, mm -hmm. which was at Jerusalem, and mm -hmm. the king and his princes his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Was that it? Yeah. All it. right. So yeah, this is, so the, the vessels that the priests use to go into the presence of God, to offer up incense to God, to sacrifice, all of those things, were taken by Nebuchadnezzar. God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take them because his people had sinned and God wasn't visiting him. So he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take them and put him in his treasure house. Mm -hmm. it, it, he stored up. It basically was a storage. So he put him in a treasure house, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't mess with him. He knew better. He knew better. He had enough sense. <laughs> this was his way of show that he's mighty and powerful, that he conquered them, but he put it up in his treasure house. Yeah. But his stupid great great grandson, <laughs> arrogant, ignorant, proud, mm -hmm. he was like, you know what? I'm going to show these people. Up. And he mm -hmm. went and he took some of those vessels and he was drinking under his gods and worshiping yeah. his God. So, but God said, that's enough. My Lord, my Lord. You shouldn't have did that. It's, you're finished. You've been weighed in the balance. You mm -hmm. come up short and you're done. And that very night, is when Belshazzar was killed by Cyrus and, and then the Persians took over uh, from there. And so we see that although uh, they were vessels of God used, they were sanctified, they were only supposed to be used for a priest, they right. still were used for the service of God. Mm -hmm. right. God yeah, allowed right. Nebuchadnezzar to take them, but then when his uh, descendant messed with them, God punished him. Wow. And so we see that. But then also, these vessels, these items were <clears throat> brought back to Jerusalem. Praise God. Under King Cyrus. Oh, glory, glory. And we'll have uh, Brother Larry, if you would get Ezra, mm -hmm. Ezra chapter one, Ezra chapter one, verses seven through 11. This is after the Babylonian captivity. Is Cyrus is on the throne. Cyrus is allowing them to come back to Jerusalem because Isaiah prophesied that it would happen. No results found. What? He's the RA. Yep. Come on. There we go. It's chapter one. Chapter one, verse seven through 11. More, moreover, King Cyrus brought out the article belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem, 
and had placed in the temple of his god. Cyrus, king of Persia, had them brought by, oh boy, what is that one, Mith, Mithridath? Mithridath. Mithridath. Mithridath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Jezbazar. Jezbazar, the prince of Judah. Uh, and then uh, you said to 11? Yes. This was the inventory. Gold dishes, 30. Silver dishes, 1,000. Silver pans, 29. Uh, gold bowls, 30. Matching silver bowls, 410. Other articles, 1,000. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and, gold and of silver. Shezabar brought all these along with the exiles when they came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. Isn't that amazing? So again, the Bible, the Bible is his own best commentary. In yes. Daniel, it just mentions. In, in Daniel and in uh, the Kings, it mentions the vessels. But here now, uh, Ezra, who was a ready scribe, mm -hmm. as the script, he mm -hmm. enumerates those vessels to tell yes. exactly what was taken away. Mm -hmm. uh, all those silver and gold vessels and even count them. Adam counted numbered. Well, Nebuchadnezzar took them and stored it in his treasure house to his God. But then Cyrus, when, when after he defeated Babylon, he released all of these vessels to take back to Jerusalem right. because they needed it for their worship. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. They yeah. needed these things mm -hmm. for their worship because yeah. Christ hadn't come yet. Come on now. Amen. Now, we don't need gold dishes and silver dishes and silver no. pans and gold no. bowls and, no. and snuffers and shovel. We don't need that now. No, but they needed it then. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that's why again they were preserved and they were brought back. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got we got better sacrifices. Come on to now. Know. That's Hebrew. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Thank going going Jesus. back to Daniel, and we'll finish up with this. Mm -hmm. It says, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. Mm -hmm. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Uh, Shinar, uh, we're not going to, yeah, I'm just here. Yeah. Uh, we might, we can come out of that, yeah. Shinar was the ancient name of Babylon. So again, Shinar was the, that, that region, that area. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we see that in the table of nations in Genesis chapter number 10, when Nimrod uh, started the kingdom of Babylon, Erak, all those things in, in Shinar. So that's the old ancient name for it. At the house of his God, Baal was the chief domestic God of Babylon. I could say one of the Baals mm -hmm. who was worshiped in the tower or the temple of Babylon. Uh, Isaiah 46 and one talks about Baal and Nebo bowing down uh, yes. to God. So, I mean, he's the one true God. That word Baal or Baal, you know, we know it as Baal, Baal, B-A, uh, apostrophe, A-L. It means master, owner, or Lord. Hmm. That's all it means. It, it also has husband as it in there. And, uh, hmm. brother, brother Phil and, and I had the unfortunate privilege of meeting a fellow a long time ago who gets stuck on that word and oh. he just <laughs> went nuts yeah. how how uh you know uh lord no one should use the word lord because it was bail and all of this stay with oh, he was boy. a mixed up fellow boy he was yeah. he came yeah. to one of our bible studies and uh, the lord worked it all out didn't he brother Phil? <laughs> yeah he did oh boy what a what a, what a story <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it just means Lord in the sense, small Lord, you mm -hmm. know, master, owner. That's what Baal means. But each nation had their own Baal. Mm -hmm. okay. You had Baal Zur, which was the Baal of Tyre. You had Baal Lebanon, which was the Baal of Lebanon. You had Baal Zebub, which was the God of Ekron. And mm -hmm. that was the, the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And then you had Baal Moridak. Bel Moridek was Lord Moridek, and that was Babylon's God. As a matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar's son, his actual son, <clears throat> evil Moridak, 
was yeah. named after one of their gods. Yes. And, and so we see here also the word treasure house of his God. It means a depository. Mm -hmm. In other words, he put it in his armory or his storehouse and he left it there and he didn't touch it until right. his knucklehead uh, great grandson <laughs> got a hold of it. And then God took care of him too. So that yes. takes us up to uh, verse that finishes up in verse number two. So Lord willing, uh, next week, which would be next Tuesday. Yep, next Tuesday. Yeah, so Tuesday that's my calendar. Yep, yeah. next Tuesday, Lord willing, we'll be right. back in right. Daniel and uh, continue on as we go. We'll stop right there. Any questions, comments? Oh, today's Wednesday. Yeah, today's Wednesday. I work next Wednesday. What I like about the story is that how how it was prophesied that they would take those items and they would mm -hmm. be stored. And then it was prophesied in Ezekiel that those items would come back for their worship. Uh, it just helps us know that when God does make a promise, he will fulfill it. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, yes, uh, uh, and, and that's something that we uh, have to hold on to as believers. Yes. And whatever he says in his word, he's going to bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even with all the difficulty, they're being taken out to Babylon and they came back with difficulty. It's still God is able to keep Amen. his promise in our difficulties, Amen. through difficulty, through sickness, through trouble. Uh, God is still a promise keeper. And that's just, just a blessing to see how God is in control of everything. Mm -hmm. yes. We can wrap our faith around all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because as Jeff talked last week, um, uh, Hezekiah had showed the king of Babylon all the things that uh, the treasuries that were there, and Isaiah told him, "Because you did that, all this is going down to Babylon." Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 because he was supposed to show mm -hmm. the things that belong to the Lord mm -hmm. uh, to the Gentiles. Right. And so, just as sure as you're born, God, like you said, God's word is true. I don't care how many curves and hills and valleys and Thank you. turns it takes. It's true. It's still true. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God raised up Nebuchadnezzar to take his people into captivity. Yes. And he raised up Cyrus to have his, uh, to release yes. his mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. from captivity. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the the so Bible. God, God rules in the armies of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And among the inhabitants of the earth, nobody can ask him what he's doing or stop him from doing it. <laughs> oh, God. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said about. Him. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and that's the same God that we serve today. All right. Yes. We'll talk about it. He Thank rules you. in the armies of heaven Thank you, Jesus. and Thank among you, the inhabitants of the earth. Yes. Amen. Yes. Nobody can ask him what he's doing Thank you, Jesus. or stop him from doing it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But then he also goes on and says, and he is able to humble those who walk in pride. Mm. Amen. Yes. We got a whole lot of proud, evil workers in our day. Yes, we do. Woo. Just mm. like he brought all the rest of them down, he'll bring these down too. He will. Yes. 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 Jerry Nadler says, this, this, uh, God's will is of no concern to this Congress. Wow. Well, I yeah. heard him say that. The Lord will yeah. deal with him. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah. One of Kim's favorite scriptures is, what is it, Kim? It is a foolish thing to, to fall, fall into the, the hands hand of a living God. Of a living God. Amen. <laughs> oh, boy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Very beautiful. All righty. Okay. Let me stop the recording.